Hi, I'm Nadej Cezana, and you can call me Nan. I help coaches stop stress eating one craving at a time so that they can be an example of what's possible. Do you want to transform your relationship with food? We often label food as good or bad, but what if we could actually enjoy any food or any drink we want without guilt or shame? There are at least three benefits to having a better relationship with food. The first one is an improved physical health. We know that eating a balanced and healthy diet can help with a healthy weight, but also with the risk of chronic diseases like diabetes or heart disease. And we also know that it can boost your energy levels. That's the first thing. The second benefit is that you can improve your mental health if you improve your relationship with food. It means that it can have a positive impact in your mental health. We know that eating a balanced and varied diet that includes plenty of nutrient-rich foods can help you improve your mood, your stress, and your anxiety. And it can also boost your cognitive function so that you can be faster in your reasoning. It can also, having a better relationship with food can also increase your self-esteem because uh, it can increase also your body image. When you feel good about your food choices, then you're more likely to feel good about yourself overall. And that's not all, because having a better relationship with food means that you're going to have a better relationship with others. Remember, food can be shared with meals. And so if you improve your relationship with food, you're also going to improve your relationships, your social connections, and you're going to strengthen relationships. So if you're like many of the coaches that I coach, here's what may be happening for you. Perhaps you've eaten a bag of chips. And when you think about the bag of chips that you've eaten, perhaps you'll tell yourself, oh, this food is bad for me. And when you think of this bag of chips that you've eaten, and when you think this food is bad for me, perhaps the main emotion that you feel is guilt. And if you're anything like me or my clients, whenever we feel guilty, here's what we do. We tend to stop interacting with the other people we're sharing the meal with. And we can be in our head, ruminating, thinking about all this we've done. So we don't move on. We actually stay stuck thinking about this bag of chips that we've eaten. But to feel better, we may also reach for more food. The thing is that as an impact, as a result, this behavior impacts our life in the sense that we actually make it even worse for ourselves. And what's always fascinating me is that it's not the fact that we've eaten a bag of chips that make us reach for more. It's not the fact that we've eaten a bag of chips that make us make it even worse for ourselves, as we said, mentally, physically, emotionally. No, we've eaten a bag of chips. That's a fact. But it's really the story we're telling ourselves about doing that. When we tell ourselves, this food is bad for me, then we actually create the guilt. The guilt is what's creating more actions, like overeating, right? And when we overeat, that's when we make it worse for us. It's not the bag of chips. It could be anything else. But it's only because we're telling ourselves, this food is bad for me, right? So that's really what I want us to explore. Even if it's common to think about good foods, bad foods, it's not serving us to consider some foods as bad, to villainize a type of food. What's really interesting here is that it's as if there are good or bad foods, and I like to call it the switch. It's either on or off. There's no middle ground. It's either good or bad with no, the, no possibility of being 
good and bad, bad and good, right? Because why do why do we reach for chips? Maybe because we like the salty taste or any other flavor, uh, because we like the crunchness and the lightness of it, right? We like the sound of it, right? So there are good aspects of the chips. It's not all bad, but when we interpret the chips as all bad, that's when we actually reach for more either chips or anything else, or we beat ourselves up, which is completely unpleasant and unnecessary. So what if there was no right or wrong, no good or bad foods? And this is really what I'm inviting you to do, as always. First, notice. Notice that you're having maybe that scenario in your head that you think a certain food is bad for you, that makes you feel guilty because you've eaten it, and then it creates that loop of overeating, blaming yourself, thinking the food is bad, and so on and so forth, and you're still in this loop, right? So we've noticed that. Once you've noticed that, the second step is to question it. So I'm going to invite you to consider three questions among so many other possibilities, but here they are. The first one is, why is this food so bad for me, right? We know that it's an, it's an opinion, this food is bad, is an opinion, but why? Let's be more specific. Let's explore what's so bad about this food for you, right? That's the first thing. The second question you could explore is, what's the upside of deciding there are good and bad foods? What's in it for you? What's in it for your brain? I'm curious. The third question you could want to answer is how much, how many chips would I eat if I didn't decide they were bad for me? And why? Let's be curious. If we didn't consider chips to be good or bad, like maybe another food, another type of food that you don't consider either good or bad, do you tend to overeat them? Or could it be that the way we talk to ourselves about chips is actually what's creating this cycle of overeating them? So as always, I like to have three steps. The first one being noticing, noticing that thought in your head that maybe this food is bad for me. The second step is to question that thought. And the third step is to try and see Try and emphasize all the thoughts instead of this thought, this food is bad for me. So here are three suggestions. The first one could be, I'm thinking this food is bad for me and I could be wrong, right? So it's like inviting the possibility of other, other ways to think about one type of food. I'm thinking this food is bad for me and I could be wrong. The second thought you might consider thinking is food is food. Right? So very neutral way of seeing food. Food is food. It doesn't matter whether it's a piece of cheese, a piece of pizza, or a slice of pizza, or a piece of cake, or greens, vegetables, a smoothie. Right? It doesn't matter. Food is food. What do you think of that? And the third sentence that you could choose to think is, there are foods that I like and foods that I don't like. Nothing's gone wrong. Right? We all have our preferences and we know that from person to person, they vary. So nothing's gone wrong. And it may also be true that a lot of people like chips. So what? So I really hope this video was helpful to you. And I also want to invite you, if you think it uh, it's, would be relevant for you, to join the Stress Eating Freedom Call because we may know that we don't want to overeat this type of food. Maybe it's chips, maybe it's completely different. It doesn't matter, but we don't know what to do. So in this stress eating freedom call, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you really how to apply this proven method that really helps you uh, get re break free of stress eating, right? I can show you what you can do and I know you can do it, so that you stop overeating as if you were an autopilot. If you're interested, simply click the link below and join me for your free stress eating freedom call. It's going to be a simple one hour Zoom call, but I can guarantee you that it's going to be amazing. Until next time, have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye bye.